Laker fans, how we doing? My name is Sammy Long here with Hoops Talk. Today we're getting into a little Lakers Pacers preview. These teams met last Sunday. High scoring affair, zero defense was played. We'll get into that game a little bit later. We'll also talk about Indiana's strengths and weaknesses. And then we're also going to talk about how the Lakers are putting pressure on the teams ahead of them. This is the most excited I've been as a Laker fan all season long. They really seem like they found something this five game win streak with guys in and out of the lineup, just finding ways to win, no matter who it is. It's really cool to see, and I think they got a real chance to move up in the standing, something I didn't necessarily think a couple weeks ago. But to start with their strengths and weaknesses, Indiana wants to high-scoring game. They lead the NBA in, in points per game at 123. They also lead the NBA in assists per game at 31. So this team likes to, likes to get up and down, go. Halliburton starts and stops with him. He averages a little, around 21 points per game and 11 assists per game. Miles Turner, seven rebounds per game. Pascal Siakam is being acquired at the deadline. I mean, really, just a superstar player. He had a great game against the Lakers in, in the in the on Sunday, so he he's been great for them and kind of created a real nice one-two punch with him and Halliburton. Obi Toppin, guys, kind of resurrected his career, shooting around fifty-seven percent from the field, and then guys come off the bench. I mean, this team goes deep on their bench. T.J. McConnell, Doug McDermott, both had good games. So the Lakers need their rest. I'm glad this game is happening. After a day of rest, I think if we would have played them yesterday after the crazy Bucks win in double OT, probably would have got beat because they, they they like to get out and run. And so I, the Lakers need to have some fresh legs for Friday night to to make sure they can they can handle. Them. What they don't do super well, they don't rebound super well. They average only around 41 rebounds per game. So they don't get a lot of second chance points, but they don't need them a lot of the time because they're hitting shots, as we saw in the last game. Getting into that. I mean, that game was crazy to watch. If you like offense, 295 combined points. I mean, AD had 36, LeBron at 26, Dinwiddie with 26. Huge contributor. That's what you want to see from Spencer Dinwiddie. You know, not that he's going to get 26 every night, but to be able to, I mean, contribute. In, in being thrust in the starting lineup, you're like, oh, we're not going to get any scoring from there. And it means that they're going to bring a guy on AD or LeBron. No, Dinwiddie held his own. Reeves had 25. I mean, great. Even the bench contributed. In, in the bench is what I was really worried about in that game because they didn't have a lot of players. And then bringing Dinwiddie up, you know, who knows? The bench gets even thinner. Prince actually had 14. The whole bench contributed with 28. So, you know, the Lakers aren't a bench team. So other teams might look at that number and go, that's not great. But th they got something. In some games, the Lakers, that has not been the case. They've gotten like six combined points in their bench, which is just unacceptable and asks way too much of the starters Siakam had a huge game. He 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 was unreal. And, you know, the Lakers really got a lock in defensively. Something what I like about what happened in this game was really over the past past week in the in the winning streak, the Lakers are finding ways to win in different ways. So you have you play a pacer team where you need to score 150 to win with without some big time players playing in that game. You score 150 when it's a, it's a high scoring affair, and people go, ah, yeah, well, you know, you can't you can't win going into playoffs like that. Well, you know, you need to win the regular season, and that's true. I agree with that, but you, it's nice to know that there's other ways to win. The game before that, Philadelphia, you win an ugly, lower scoring 101 to 94 game. People go, oh, well, you should have blow, blew, uh, blew them out. We saw the Sixers are hanging with a bunch of people right now, even without Embiid. The game before that, the Hawks game. You could blow them out and people go, ah, oh, well, you should have done that. That's the team at their best. It's nice to see the Lakers winning when they're at the best, when the shots aren't going in, they're locking in defensively against Philly. When 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 there's no defense being played and they need to drop 150, they can do that. And then obviously, I mean, the Bucks game was was unbelievable. I mean, that that was just crazy. Double overtime win. No one expected that. I mean, the the odds makers, booksmakers had it in, in minus nine and a half Milwaukee, and it was going up right before the game time. So they were expecting a blowout. In, it says a lot about this team that without LeBron James, you go down 19 in the first quarter, you get, you're down 19 at one point in the fourth. That's where a lot of teams go, ah, let's pack it in. You know, we have an excuse. We're not going to get killed. We didn't have our best player. No, what they did was, you know, boxing. They bit down their mouthpiece and, and finished the job. I mean, that, that was that was an impressive game. Best win of the season, in my opinion. And that gives you, you know, what is Alvin saying in every postgame show? Lakers got to go four and two on the road trip. Everyone kind of wrote that in as a loss because obviously we beat the Bucks in a crazy uh, game 
three weeks ago, thinking a little revenge game in Milwaukee, no LeBron, and the Lakers pick one off, which was huge. Then you followed up with Memphis. This team's showing a lot of grit. You get up huge, everything's working right. Darvin Ham takes Rui, Reeves, and LeBron out the game for some reason in the third quarter. It's kind of lackadaisical. They're not playing. Memphis gets the lead all the way down to seven. And then Lakers still fight, come, come out and hit two straight threes. Prince and D'Lo, I believe. Hit two straight threes, get it going. And that, so it, that's what's most been encouraging to me is that they're finding ways to win games. Now, with this game upcoming, you know that they're going to want revenge. The, the Pacers are only a game up from the Heat in their, in their plan. So they got a lot to play for. This is not like a team that's just kind of, yeah, we're sitting pretty in the two, three spot. We know we're going to be here. So we don't have, you know, we're going to take it lighter, even though we're going to play. No, the Pacers need this game. The Lakers beat them in the season tournament and they beat them last Sunday, beat them at their game, which is all offense. So you know that they're going to come. It's going to be in Indiana. Indiana. Crowd's going to be rocking. Lakers got to have energy. I hope. They got, they got in the ice bass. They, they did everything because, you know, obviously with the Tuesday game going double overtime, Wednesday it was looking like we were able to rest all our guys, and then they cut it to a point where we couldn't. Now they still got the win, so it's all good. But So Friday, this is going to be a high-scoring game. Now, even if you lose to the Pacers, there's still a chance to go 5-1 and one on the road trip, which is what people, you know, thought would be great before the Milwaukee game. But, man, if you can, if you can beat the Pacers – I mean, then you got the Nets. That should be a victory. It's the Raptors and then Wizards or Wizards Raptors. I mean, that that's these are all very winnable games. And it's it's just it's exciting. So, but the Lakers need to have some fire because this week has been interesting in terms of games because Milwaukee wanted to get revenge against us for the Friday night game three weeks ago. We want to get revenge on Memphis for absolutely molly whopping us a couple of months ago. Now, Pacers want to get revenge on us. Tomorrow night. And then we want to get revenge on the Nets, who came in and just destroyed us in L.A. in a game that everyone kind of wrote, wrote in as a Laker W in, in early January, I believe. So it's interesting. I'm glad they're keeping that high energy. That's what that's what I love to see from this team. And hopefully it continues in this tomorrow night because they're going to need it. Talking about them putting pressure on teams above them. Kind of got into that five game win streak. Lakers are two games back right now from yeah, or one and a half games back from Sacramento. As I'm making this video, two games back from Phoenix and two and a half games back from Dallas. There's not really a game on tonight on the 28th that totally matters for the Lakers because yeah, the Bucks are playing the Pelicans, but you're probably not catching the Pelicans. I mean, that's probably not happening. Obviously, it'd be great. It's just good to see teams lose. It sucks that the Sixers couldn't beat the Clippers last night because the Clippers have kind of been in a free fall. And, of course, you know, Denver can't come through for us, which is unbelievable. You know, the one time I'm rooting for the Denver Nuggets, they can't beat Phoenix. But tomorrow night, obviously, the Lakers play. Need a victory there. And then all the things that we're rooting for. We're rooting for the Mavs beat the Kings again. Heading into their two-game series because the Mavs beat them bad in Sacramento the other, the other day. Whoever won the first game, you want to win the second game. You don't want to see them split because then it's just they're kind of treading water with each other. Hopefully the Mavs beat the Kings. Going to be tough, obviously, in Sacramento again. Again, they just beat them. But hopefully Luka and Kyrie can pull one out for us. Hornets, they could pull something together against the Warriors. The Warriors, I'm not as worried about the Warriors because they're just seem like being a free fall. I mean, Draymond's getting ejected from games. They barely beat the Magic. You know, it's Steph heroics is what they need. Steph's, Steph's emotional when Draymond gets ejected. Kerr and, and Steph are calling him out after the game. I mean, I don't – I'm not I, – I'm not worried about them at all. You know, obviously in a one-game scenario, they can be very dangerous because Steph Curry's an, an amazing player, Hall of Famer. But, you know, and then you have Magic against Clippers. would be great if they could win. Thunder against the Suns. This is the big one. Come on, Oklahoma City. We need you to do something for us. Phoenix got a brutal schedule. They picked one off against Denver the other night, as I mentioned, but that's still, they still got a brutal schedule after. And the Thunder, you know, the Thunder, T Wolves, and Nuggets are all jostling for positioning right now. The T Wolves play the Nuggets tomorrow night, also, which is interesting for the Lakers in this sense is that it, let's say the Lakers aren't able to get up to the seven or eight spot and they got to win two games in. In to get in, and then if the Nuggets are one, you're looking at it like, ah, damn, you know, you draw the, the best team in the Western Conference in the first round. But the Timberwolves are only a half game back, and the Thunder are only a half game back. So, 
all these all these games are really crucial for them. And if you, you know, obviously you want to move up because you you want to you have to get in first. You want you want two cracks at it. But if you're able to draw Oklahoma City in the first round, or even the T Wolves of Carl, Carl Anthony Towns isn't there, that's a much better draw than than the Nuggets. I mean, it would be ideal if the Nuggets could fall to three. That would be perfect. And let the Pelicans handle them in the first round, even though they, they'd probably beat the Pelicans. But let them deal with them and see them when the Lakers are even healthier. Gabe Vincent, Vando, guys getting healthy down, down the stretch. Um, speaking of that, Gabe Vincent might return Sunday against Brooklyn. Great news. It's awesome that he's going to get a couple weeks to, to, to get going because he hasn't played all year. I mentioned this before in preview videos. I'm not as worried about Vando getting back into game shape. You're not you're not asking him to be a high volume shooter. You're not asking him to score in bunches. You're just asking him to defend, and that's something he's great at. He played a majority of the season and then got hurt. So obviously, you want a few games to get going, but I'm not as worried about him. Gabe Vincent needs some time. You know, he's a shooter, defender. He's he, he you can't just ask him to come in the play and have him not played all year and then hey go go score 20 points, but. What Darvin Ham can do with these lineups, man, when they're healthy, is just really exciting. I can't wait. Lakers on a tear right now. Hopefully they continue that tomorrow night. And we're talking about on the postgame show about how the Lakers may go undefeated on the road trip. So thank you guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, please uh, get into the postgame show tomorrow night and go Lakers. Thank you.